I did bring the Ocelot, which I will talk about later in this show, what the new name of the Ocelot is, but we did get a winner, so congratulations to those of you who participated in that, and thank you to the winner. I will announce you and your prize later on today. But let's get right on into it. I want to talk about some fun stuff today, and by fun stuff, I mean death scenes. Yeah. Death scenes in movies. Uh, I have some favorites. I want to go over them. First of all, I want to talk about them, and then I want to describe them to those of you who are listening and, uh, and or who you're watching it, but I'm not going to put up the movie footage because, you know, that copyright law and getting sued and losing my non-existent monetization. You know, the usual stuff. So I'm going to probably just describe these scenes, and then hopefully you guys have feedback for me. As always, you can email us at defeatedbydeliciousfruitpies at gmail.com. You can send us messages on Twitter at dbdfp and you can send us messages on facebook at defeated by delicious fruit pies so there are lots of ways to get a hold of us please feel free to utilize your time wisely and get a hold of us but the first death scene that i would love to reintroduce into your life and introduce if you somehow are under a rock and you've never seen this is in jurassic park the lawyer that gets out of the car and runs to the bathroom when the t-rex shows up and then, you know, Ian Malcolm's like, well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. So he's in the bathroom, you know, fast forward a little bit. There's some screaming dinosaurs, not gonna lie, it's a little obnoxious, but, you know, they do what they have to do, these T-Rexes. And so then he's making noise and whatever, he's just sitting in there, God knows the noises he's making. I'm not making any insinuation about that. <clears throat> but gross dude gets the T-Rex to blow away his little cabana, which is like, it's like an outhouse made out of like bamboo and brush, which I don't know how that was legal, but spared no expense, you know? So anyway, the T-Rex then sees him and he kind of like, oh, like tries to cover himself because that's totally how you defend yourself against the T-Rex. Everybody knows that it's bare knuckles boxing. You go after the T-Rex like this because they don't have arms. Their arms are just stubby. So you challenge them to bare knuckles boxing. But anyway, he doesn't fight the T-Rex properly. So he gets at. So that's one of my favorite death scenes in a movie where the T-Rex just comes down like and just like eats him. Insta-kill, it's pretty hilarious. I mean, everybody who's seen it thinks it's pretty funny. If you have seen it and you don't think it's funny, get out. Just get out. It's okay. Just go to the outhouse that has bamboo on it and T-Rex will take care of the rest of it for us. Anyway, that moves us on to next on the list, which I actually have a little bit. Oh, by the way, I brought some props. Even in the new studio, we have props. Jurassic Park is a fantastic VHS. This is not the one that I had when I was a kid, although my mom tells me that she has a bunch of these. And if you're on here right now, mom, like, why are you watching a guy do YouTubing? Like, what are you doing? But anyway, even if you are, hi, thanks for that. And I don't need Jurassic Park. But Jurassic Park is a fantastic VHS. I didn't even bother getting it on DVD, but I did watch it in 3D in the theaters. And... Honestly, like, it was impressively good. I didn't think it was going to matter. I just wanted to see Jurassic Park again in the theater. But it was honestly, like, pretty fantastic. So, great thing to pick up if you got a chance. The next one we move on to is Demolition Man. I've spoken about this recently, i.e. last week's episode, where I talked about a certain Keller that I will not rediscuss today because it got me the, the first downvotes I've ever had in a video. Uh, I'm really excited about that, and I may make it like a To the Haters video. We'll see how about that. It's, it's not like I'm popular or anything, so it's not really worth doing that yet, but you know you're doing something right when you're getting thumbs down for the first time. But anyway, Wesley Snipes, Sylvester Stallone, and uh, one of the best scenes between the two is where Wesley Snipes says, like, I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. And then the death scene in the movie, and this is like, you can tell how proud of themselves they are. The director's so proud. Because at the end of the movie, Wesley Snipes gets frozen with some of the cryogenic freezing gas. And then Sylvester Stallone comes swinging by on a machine arm that he was like trying to get away from him at because it dropped the thing that makes everything freeze. So while Wesley Snipes is just about finished being frozen, like, ah, Sylvester Stallone goes by and knocks his head off with his boots. And then it bounces and bounces and then explodes into a bunch of shards of ice. And clearly, he lost his head. Just so much justice, so much Stallone, so much action. 
Get in the action today with Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes in Demolition Man. All right, so <clears throat> that's another one of my favorite ones for sure. The next one I want to go over is, is a little bit more complicated because a lot of people probably have not watched this, although my avid horror movie fans have definitely seen this. And you'll also, if you're really into horror movies, you will appreciate how amazing the next thing I'm going to show you is. Lucio Fulci's Zombie. So the Italian director-producer who made American movies that were horror movies made Zombie. And this is the widescreen presentation, The Dead Are Among Us. This movie is, it's so campy and it's so cheap budget-wise, but it's just so good. And I have the shell casing for it and it's in fantastic condition. I mean, just look at this beauty. Look at it. Look at it. It's amazing. Um, and I have some other stuff in there, too, from that. But with the shell casing. Anyway, in this movie, the death scene in this movie that is amazing, it is the first, possibly the last, but maybe not. The la uh, it's definitely the first zombie movie to have zombies and sharks fight. So there is a scene in the movie where a zombie is being attacked by sharks, but then... The zombie grabs a shark, like Jaws and James Bond, and bites the shark. And that's fantastic. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a scuba diving girl who has like a scuba suit and is trying to get away from these underwater threats, uh, these zombies. And it's, it's just fantastic. And what a great way to send off a shark, uh, turning it into a zombie shark. What they didn't play in the rest of the movie is the fact that the entire Great Barrier Reef became the zombie reef. And uh, it basically just turned into Dead Jack and that dystopian world. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Happy to discuss that for you if you are not aware of that great book. The next movie that has one of my favorite death scenes in it is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So there are three main characters in this movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. So uh, just so you know who those people are, The Good is... Clint Eastwood. The bad is down here. Or no, he's right here. Angel Eyes. And the ugly is Tuco. So the funny thing about this movie is these guys are all like really kind of like great at what they do. And um, none of them are really like fantastic people, except for Clint Eastwood. Obviously, he's the good. But Angel Eyes is obviously a bad person. And Tuco's kind of just like this whatever. He'll just do whatever. He's, he's not a great guy. They introduce him by having him go to somebody's house and mess it all up and, and do a whole bunch of dumb things. But he's not like evil, evil, like Angel Eyes is evil. Angel Eyes, the, the bad, is the guy who's hired by one guy to assassinate another person. And then that person pays him when he comes there to assassinate the other guy. So he still kills that guy because the other guy paid him. But then he goes back and kills that guy too. Like That's why he's the bad. Uh, but anyway, in the movie, this guy, uh, the ugly, Tuco, is... There's a bounty for his head, obviously, because he's stupid. But he's ugly, too. So he has this guy show up while he's taking a bath. And the guy just starts talking about, like, ha, 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 I got you, and blah, 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 and you're so screwed. And, I... and while this guy's sitting there talking, Tuco shoots him from inside the bath that he's in with the revolver that he's been hiding in the bath. And then he gets done. After the guy dies, he just goes, if you're going to shoot, shoot. Don't talk. And then it goes, ah, wah, wah, wah. that's just a great scene. It's fantastic to see him just give that life lesson by killing somebody. Uh, so just so you know, if you're going to shoot, shoot, don't talk. Um, this leads me to shooting. It gets to, if this were a real, like, true, honest top 10, this would be my number one death scene. So, you know, what I found out is that on the YouTube analytics, I think that the average that people watch is like five minutes, six minutes. So if you're already here, you're like the equivalent of how ridiculous is 44 Club. Like you're past 10 minutes, so you can learn all of the things. So you don't mind that I'm going to give you the best one right now. The best death scene, and by best I mean worst, and I'm going to leave it in the description. So don't worry for all of you who are going to watch this later on. Uh, go down in the description and watch this. It's uh, In English, the name of the movie is Karate Girl. It's a 1973 Turkish film. This movie has the best death scene of all time. <laughs> so somehow, the, the Karate Girl, it, it's kind of like Kill Bill in 1973, uh, finds this guy, and he goes to get his gun, 
and he's in like a living room setup, which clearly looks like it was like the producer's mom's bedroom, you know, but they got to use it for the day. So she just like shoots him with the, her clearly blank gun, which just has smoke coming all out of it. And he just goes, ah, like as loud as he can, just screaming like, ah, for like at least like 10, 15 seconds. And he's turning around and like he squeezes like a ketchup packet inside of his hand, like next to his stomach and keeps going, ah. And he goes to turn around against the wall. Then it clips to her, and she pulls the trigger again and shoots him a second time. Now, you'd think this just puts another hole in him, right? No. Starts the whole thing over again. Then he just screams again as if it's the first time he got shot. Ah! Like, screams again. And there's, like, not even a second bullet hole at first. She shoots him again. He does it again. This death scene lasts for, like, I don't know how long. Let me see how long this lasts. I think I looked it up earlier. But it's, like, it's something like six minutes of this guy getting shot like four times and just screaming brand new like every time he gets shot and then finally like making it on top of his mom's bed just like uh and just goes ba -da, ba -da, and that's it that's, that's the end of the scene i highly encourage you to click on that link uh get get these people some likes and some sub subscribers it's a fantastic scene all right the next one that i love teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 secret of the ooze if you haven't watched the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, so that's the first one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Unfortunately, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, it has time travel in it. And it doesn't exactly have James Cameron quality time travel in it. But deleting Yoshi and the rest of the nonsense that happens in Turtles 3. In Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, which was granted a much goofier, lighthearted version of the first movie, which was really serious and actually a pretty good drama, plus Muppets. Um, the second movie has one of the best death scenes of all time. So Shredder creates Toka and Razar. And they are a wolf and a snapping turtle that are turned into gigantic wolf and snapping turtle okay it's the same thing but mutated just imagine big and nasty right like just watch the movie anyway so he makes these guys but he still has a little bit of ooze left so the turtles defeat toka and razar by feeding them donuts that have what oh spoilers Ooh. i'm not going to tell you exactly what happens with them but suffice it to say it has to do with donuts and vanilla ice Yes, I actually said Vanilla Ice. Like, he has a song in the movie. You didn't watch Turtles 2? Now you know it has Vanilla Ice in it? I don't know why you're not definitely buying it, like, immediately. Like, get on eBay right now. Get the VHS. Don't even wait to look at it on digital. Sit back, relax, and wait your week and a half for it to be shipped to you. Put it into your VCR that you probably don't have and watch this for the original glory that it is. But anyway, so Shredder has the ooze. And he knows that he can't beat all four Ninja Turtles by himself. His, in, his entire plan basically relied on making mutants to destroy mutants. Because Shredder's not really good at plans. I mean, you find this out in the cartoon, right? Like, he plans things, but he doesn't really plan things. He gets involved with a brain from Dimension X named Krang. He doesn't plan ahead. He lets a brain in a robotic suit make all his plans for him. Okay, so this is not a planner. He's not the thinker in the group, if you know what I mean. So he gets the ooze, uses it on himself because they're like basically going to like smoke him. <clears throat> then he goes all psycho because apparently ooze in humans doesn't mix well. I, I can't imagine why. And uh, it only turns Splinter into a rat, but like who's talking? Um, anyway, so he starts punching the support beams on the dock that they're all under. And the turtles are like... Don't do this. If you do this, you're going to destroy us all. And he's like, so be it. Because he's like, you know, psycho, super shredder. So anyway, by the way, the arcade game is really, really hard. And fighting super shredder is great, but it's really hard. Because he just punches you while you're trying to jump kick him. And then you fly off and you get hurt. But anyway, I digress. So he does, in fact, destroy all of the pillars for the, the dock that they're all on. So the turtles, like, jump off into the water. And being that, you know, they're, they're turtles... They tur it turns out they're okay. It turns out turtles are okay in the water, right? So that's the first lesson you learn in that movie. But then the second lesson that you learn is that Super Shredder can destroy docks and still stick his hand out. So he sticks his hand out from, like, the wreckage of the docks. And one of the turtles goes, nobody could have survived that. 
And it's almost like his hand listened to them and just goes, oh, uh, oh, and like drops down and he's like dead, apparently. Because he's not in Turtles 3. So Turtles 3 assumes that that was correct. So he dies. So this is a death scene. Even in a kid's movie, in a Jim Henson kid's movie, there's death. And it's, it's super shorter. And it's hilarious. All right, next one. Oh, one of my favorites. From Mortal Kombat, the movie. In the beginning of the movie, the Liu Kang character, I think he has like a dream where his brother is fighting Shao Kahn. And Shao Kahn is just decimating this idiot kid. Like, like, why is this kid fighting? This is like, you know, it would be like a person running up against like a cavalry. You know, it's, it's just such a bloodbath. Anyway, this is getting annihilated. And I think even in slow motion with some fog effects because like the camera was probably really bad because it was low budget. And uh, hopefully it was low budget because it looked low budget. And so <laughs> Shao Kahn goes, your brother's soul is mine. You will be next. And then his brother's just like, Lou! And then he just like punches him one last time and then he like wakes up. But clearly his brother's soul is, is his. So that's kind of the beginning of the movie. But it's a really funny way to begin a movie. We used to watch it all the time. I was over at my friend Brad's house. We'd watch that a lot. It was pretty hysterical. So props to that Mortal Kombat stuff. Speaking of poorly uh, directed and bad movie quality but awesome movies, RoboCop. So in RoboCop, if you haven't seen RoboCop, not the new one. Please, not the new one. The new one is... Um, the only good thing about the new one, I will say, is that like Michael Keaton's a bad guy. And if you watch Spider-Man uh, Homecoming, and, and then you watch like anything that has to do with, with the Spider-Man new series with Michael Keaton being a bad guy, he's a really good bad guy. So anyway, the original one that did not have any of this nonsense, but just had really, really funny commercials and a lot of really good political commentary, and the, uh, that, that Cadillac that they had in the movie called the SUX, the like, sucks, the 3000 sucks, that uh, in that movie, there's a great death scene where there's the Ed 209. Now, if you don't know what the Ed 209 is, first of all, like catch up on your Robocop lore. I, I can't help you. And if, if you haven't played Robocop versus Terminator for the Super Nintendo, we're gonna have to make an episode for you people. But in the meantime, look up Robocop and you'll realize Ed 209 is like the nemesis of Robocop. And, and he, he pops up and he's kind of like a he, he's not really a meme because there weren't really memes in the 80s, but the Ed 209 was this war machine that had these gigantic guns and like rocket launcher and stuff on his arms. And uh, so to demonstrate the Ed 209, the head of the program, Dick, decided to have a test subject from the corporate head office. So there was like all these corporate VPs and stuff there. And he tells the one guy to pick up a gun and to point it at the Ed 209. So he does that, and then that triggers the Ed to threaten him and tell him, you have 20 seconds to comply. Put down the weapon immediately. So he does that. And then it growls at him, like, literally with a lion growl, like the MGM lion growl, because you need a lion growl to be threatening when you're a 12-foot-tall, gigantic mech warrior with arms that are cannons, you need a lion growl. So anyway, so he says that to the guy. And then so he's not understanding why he can't turn it off. But then the people with the panel, the control panel, are like, oh, it's not working. And it's pretty clear. Our boy's going to eat it. So he's trying to run back and forth between everybody else. Help me, help me. And the thing is just like, you have 10 seconds to comply. You have five seconds to comply. And then all of a sudden, like he gets thrown over away from everybody because they're like, no, not today, buddy. And he just goes... I am now authorized to use lethal force. And he just, bum, 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 And he's like blasting this dude with like 40 rounds of like 50 cal ammo. <laughs> like it makes no sense that he needed to neutralize this dude who didn't even have a weapon in a way that probably could have decimated a building. Yeah, you know, like you ever see Predator? Of course you have. When uh, you have the scene where the Predator's like messing with them and makes them waste all their ammo and the guy uses the minigun and mows down half the rainforest. It's kind of like that, but like picture that with like one dude just over and over again getting shot. I mean, it's just, it's, it's hilarious. So it's not funny. Don't play with guns and don't play with machines who are threatening you or could threaten you if you did point a gun, fake or real, at them. Dun dun dun. All right. So let's go to the next very serious death scene in Castaway. 
when Tom Hanks loses Wilson to the depths of despair. So this is a very, uh, I mean, it's a lighthearted movie. I mean, obviously, it's like, it's, I think it's like half an hour long. And um, it's about a guy who goes on Survivor and realizes he's on the wrong island and they're over on the other island. And so he tries to play the game by himself, waiting for a totem and waiting for immunity. And he gets it every time, but like he gets really upset. Uh, he like has some dental problems and stuff. So anyway, he, after he's like close to getting done with the Survivor game, and he wants to go on to talk shows and stuff and become famous for being the uh, the survivor because he still doesn't realize that he's just on the wrong island. His best friend that he makes in order to not completely lose it because he's like semi lost it um, is is a ball, and that ball dies. That ball dies real bad. One day, there's an ocean. It just it just takes him away. And he's screaming for the ball. And the stupid ball doesn't even say anything back. Not it's going to be okay. Not Tom, you're going crazy. Nothing. He just, just disappears. And then Tom apparently has to sleep on floors for a while to get over it. It's great. It's touching. But, you know, like I said, it's short. Short for like half hour. You should watch it. Um, so that's a really good death scene. Very serious. Another really good death scene that I really like is from the original Dawn of the Dead. Not the one from the 2000s, but the original. Like, go to the Wayback Machine. It's like, I mean, it's a while after Night of the Living Dead, but it's a George Romero movie. Oh, George. Uh, so, in this movie, in the beginning, that shows all this nonsense of, like, zombies in a big apartment building and the SWAT team coming and, like, taking a bunch of them out but not really understanding what they're up against, so... In the one scene where there's a helicopter and there's people trying to get on it, there's this zombie who looks like John Lennon who, like, walks up to the crates and you can see him coming at them as they're trying to get on the helicopter. And so, like, Brad and I used to be, like, uh, you know, the same guy that I watched Mortal Kombat with all the time. <laughs> We'd be like, I'm John Lennon. And then he stands up, like, all the way and the helicopter chops the top of his head off, just, like, brains and everything, right off. And he's... I'm still John Lennon. Because he just stands there. He doesn't fall down. He doesn't do anything. Just stands there for a second. And then he kind of just like flops over like John Lennon. So that's a great scene. If you want to let it get some laughs on a zombie movie. I mean, I literally could have an entire episode here just about zombie movie deaths. And I mean, obviously comment or, you know, send me an email. Def defeated by delicious fruit pies at gmail.com or put, put something on social media. If you would like me to do a full zombie movie episode, I'd, I'd love to. I love zombie movies. So... As you know, if, if you're on episode 153, and this is the first time you've heard about me liking zombies, and especially, oh, by the way, I got to throw this out here for my uh, YouTube audience. We do this on audio for like 147 episodes before we did this on video. I only recently uploaded and started doing these as video and then audio as well. So if you want to hear about what Chris, Kurt, Tim, sometimes Will, and other guest speakers have to say from back in 2013 and onward, please feel free. Like, join us on iTunes. Go on to Libsyn. You can search us on uh, even Google search. You can go to DBDFP, and our episodes will show up. Feel free to listen to any of them that you'd like to. I mean, download them all. You can become a legacy downloader, and, uh, and there's some great episodes back there. I can't say the first few were so great, but then again, I can't say that episode, like, 100 was that awesome either, either but it was pretty funny. Anyway, I digress. So let me know if you want to hear a, an entire zombie movie episode. I obviously have enough to talk about them. But that's one of my favorite ones. And then the 10th the one that I want to talk about, uh, or the 11th one, honestly, it's, these are some honorable mentions. And I want, to, I want to bring these out for a couple of people who are regular listeners and who are always with us. The one is uh, for Sarah. You're welcome, by the way, in advance. In Forrest Gump, in Vietnam, they're walking through the woods, and he's talking about how one day, just like that, the rain, it stopped. And then they get shot at, right? So it's like this crazy war scene, and they're like diving behind and stuff, and so Forrest is like running backwards because Lieutenant Dan tells him to run. And while he's running in the woods, there's like mortars going off and stuff. And there's this one guy in the background. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but after watching it over 200 times, I've noticed this. And my sister and her friend Michelle apparently noticed this. But the guy who's running near him gets hit with a mortar and just completely flips. And, it's like, and it makes a buzzing noise, like legit like a bee, like bzzz, 
and he like flies like this. Now that's horrible. But they were laughing hysterically when they saw it in the theater. And my sister tells me this in the beginning of like when this movie came out, which was, you know, a bit ago. And I thought it was pretty hilarious too. So then every time I see it, I can't not see that and can't not go. I mean, it's a really serious scene. And I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, if not my favorite, but it's pretty funny. The next honorable mention I want to give is Samuel L. Jackson in Deep Blue Sea. So here's a movie where it's about super smart sharks going after people in an observatory lab under the water. Totally legit, right? I mean, obviously, like, this is the way things go all the time. But, so, he does this whole speech where he's like, and as I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I carry... And then a shark jumps up and eats him. Just, just like that. Our boy gets killed exactly like Mace Windu in the Star Wars pre-trilogy. I think both have the same quality. Hmm. That's a story for a different day. But anyway, that is my list of my top death scenes in movies for now. What are your top death scenes in movies? I'd love to know, like, if there's things that I've missed or that is categorically ignored because I've seen so many of them, or maybe I was desensitized to them, or maybe you just have a different opinion on what's funny about a death scene, or maybe you just think that there's something more to it in a death scene than it being quote unquote funny. In which case, I'm not sure that we'll see eye to eye on anything else, but I'm willing to entertain the idea that there are death scenes that are not amusing. Um, feel free, write in, defeated by delicious fruit pies at gmail.com. If you don't know how to spell it, it's here's a secret it's in the title of the YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, see, just put at gmail.com. It just copy and paste the title, get rid of the spaces at gmail.com. Okay? Okay, good. So you got that. Um, you can always send us something on Facebook. Always, You can direct message me. You can also send on Twitter. You can also comment on iTunes if that's uh, what you're listening on right now. We are growing actually at a pretty decent rate on iTunes. And obviously, we're growing like crazy on YouTube. So tell a friend. Um, don't tell your enemies because I, I'm assuming that's why I got down votes. It's just bad people doing bad things. Nothing to do with the fact that I talked about something controversial. So let's go into the next best of the rest. No, I don't have a music segment for that anymore. You know, somebody asked me that if I was going to do a music segment for that. If you have an amazing talent for music and you want to create something for that, I would be happy, more than happy, to add that into uh, my stage 10 thing here and then I would put it into the video. I'll even wait and have it come up and uh, maybe I can create some video content or something that I could put up with it to kind of make it in sync with it but i'd love to have that that'd be fun if you guys are into that just make a best of the rest um, music segment so we can break this up but the beginning of our best of the rest i'm going to talk about cuphead did you see my shirt last week i mean yeah like of course you did if you watched episode before this one but if you didn't go ahead and check that out cuphead is actually a really good game and you can get it for the switch for the Xbox, I think for the PS4, although I could be mistaken on that. Uh, but the Switch is probably the preferred console for that. I got it on the Xbox because I wanted to play it immediately, and it didn't come out for the Switch until afterward. But it doesn't mean I won't get it for the Switch. It does mean I won't get it for the Switch. I'm not buying the same game twice. Who are you? Like, who are you trying to tell me to buy these other games twice? Anyway, it's a great game. It's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up. It is uh, old-school Disney graphics because they literally created the animation frame by frame. They animated the whole game. And that's really impressive. Like, it's just really great artwork. The music is excellent. The gameplay is really smooth. It's a very difficult game if you're not a gamer. But if you are a gamer, it's a fun, mediocre challenge that you can get through all the levels. The hard thing is to get the best ranking on every level. And there's also an even better challenge on there, which is Pacifist. And I challenge you to actually get the Pacifist Award because that's very hard to get. So... I love all that. Um, I think that it's really cool that... Oh, hold on. I've got some uh, messages on here. Canada or US? Uh, we're in the US right now. So, yeah, if you're watching this, I'm not sure. Where are you watching this from? Anyway, so while we wait for that, check out Cuphead. It's, it's definitely cheaper right now. I'm sure there will be some kind of like 4th of July sale on whatever, on Xbox or like Nintendo. Although Nintendo doesn't do a great job with uh, their sales. So, but anyway, that's a great game. 
The next thing, we'll talk about television. Who said it was okay to make new series that are exclusive to streaming services? This is just a question that I have. And, you know, I'll give you a second to think about the answer to that. Did you think of a reason? And did you think of who said that? I, I never said that. I think it's just a shame. It's just a flat out shame that there are these shows that probably are watchable, but they're they're becoming exclusive to streaming services. So like on YouTube for me, because obviously I watch a lot of like comic book crap, I get a lot of these advertisements for like DC's streaming service or Marvel, uh, Marvel Disney is gonna have their streaming service. HBO has their own streaming service, Hulu, Amazon. I mean. If I were to pay for all of the different streaming services out there, there's no way I would be able to afford watching all these cool shows that are coming out. I mean, I, I just, it's ridiculous. Can we not do this? Guys, can we not do this? It's not like I loved cable TV ever, but now it's like, oh, 10 bucks a month here, 15 bucks a month here, 20 bucks a month here. And before you know it, to get any of the shows that you want to watch, you're spending like $80, $90 a month for all these subscription services. And I'm not going to go sailing the high seas just to go watch these things for free. That's not cool. I mean, you want to pay for the things that you're into. But at the same time, I don't want to be paying for like a whole subscription service. Like take Netflix, for example. I have not watched anything on Netflix for like almost a year now. Why, you might ask? Well, because like most of it's crap. And I was really disappointed with the whole Marvel thing. And they obviously tanked these shows because... They didn't want them on Netflix anymore. They wanted them to go to Marvel. So that's a whole story for another day. But my point is, it's not okay that these guys are doing it. So here's my thing. HBO, Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, stop it. Just stop. No means no. You're not taking all my money. Just put everything into like one streaming service. We'd be happy to be the host for your streaming services if you'd like. You can write us at DefeatedByDeliciousFruitPies at gmail.com. We'd be more than happy to host everybody's stuff for one low price of free 99 Free 99 will get you every month full access, unfettered to all of these different channels who are going to make nothing on it. But hey, maybe they can throw some commercials up there or something. I mean, we could figure it out. I'm sure all of you executives at all these companies who are watching this right now just got really excited. Hold your horses. Really think about what you're going to write before you send it to us. Make sure to stop thumbs downing all my videos. All right, let's keep going. Into comic books, into the Spider Verse, comic books slash movies. Uh, four out of five people on the DBDFP crew give it a two thumbs up, and that's only because there were two missing thumbs after an accident with a time machine and a meat cleaver. A hundred percent of that was Tim's fault. Just want to throw that out there. I mean, who else has the meat cleaver? And the time machine, I mean, who can blame the time machine? <laughs> Just. It's not like I made the time machine, stole the time machine. I have nothing to do with the time machine. It's Tim's fault. And if he says anything different, check his thumbs. Check his thumbs. Go watch Into the Spider-Verse. So we're going to end this with a couple of questions that we got. For questions and answers. What is the name of your show, Nikki from Massachusetts asks. Her attempts include Fruit Flies Eat the World. And Fruit Flies Festive Fry Feast for Foo Fighters. F -f 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 anyway, I'm going to start singing. Um, those are fantastic. I may even start the next episode calling us Fruit Flies Eat the World. Please keep them coming, friends. I love the plays on our, our title of our show. I know Defeated by Delicious Fruit Pies is not the easiest thing to remember. That's why I usually say DBDFP. And that's why this is NEDTJ on DBDFP. But I love these names. I love the satire on that. may even make a couple of videos about and Foo Fighters, who doesn't love those? <clears throat> and that leads us to the last part of our episode, which is Name That Ocelot. This is the contest that we have had out for a while. Had a lot of really interesting entries. Thank you all. It's been really fun to go through these. And honestly, I could say after having 16 years with this guy, it's really cool to finally have a name for him. And, I mean, we've been through a lot together. We had a breakup. And by breakup, I mean he was broken into, like, 27 pieces and I had to glue him back together uh, but then after that you know we just got closer and despite the cracks and the fact that he stole my headset I, I just you know I feel there's a real love there so thank you everybody for helping me to officially name Sir Dr. Ocelotopus um, he is an ocelot and I love Dr. Octagonopus so Dr. Ocelotopus is uh, he's great rolls right off the tongue 
So congratulations to James from Florida. You win a t-shirt, one of our first t-shirt designs. You are going to get it, and uh, it's a pretty good one. So thank you, everybody, for your entries, and we will have more contests as we go forward out there. So that is all that we have this week for Defeated by Delicious Fruit Pies. Again, if you have ideas for content or ideas for different themes for the week, we do love to go into deep dives for like, you know, about 20, 30 minutes on one topic. And then we always have a best of the rest. But feel free to send in questions, comments, even complaints. I'm not going to lie. I will read the complaints out loud. Haven't had any of those yet, which is interesting because I had all these down votes, but I didn't have any complaints. I did have somebody that asked me to eat a bag of something, though, and that was really mature, and I appreciated that. But uh, in the meantime, send in any of your questions, comments, and issues that you might have with the show. I'd love to have you on if you have these ideas or issues. And as always, my listeners, you can always be a guest on the show. Just please email me. I'll send you a link, and we'll make it work out. I do have to talk to you beforehand. There's a brief pre-interview process to make sure that you're not a psychopathic killer or some advertising agency. But, uh, you know, we, we it all comes out in the wash. So... With that, thank you everybody for joining us this week for another fascinating episode of Defeated by Delicious Fruit Pies. I am Eric Allen here, otherwise known as Ned the J on Xbox Live, Ned the Janitor on PlayStation, and uh, basically, yeah, Ned, Ned TJ on anything that you can find. So this is NEDTJ on DBDFP signing off for the week. See you on Father's Day for our Father's Day special. Bye, everybody. Defeated by Delicious Fruit Pies.